find that they learn through interaction with peers, but they learn the most when there is some kind of conflict that needs to be resolved, not when they're actually one of them knows the answer and the other one has to sit down and, and look at it. That, is, that, that, that doesn't correlate to the most progress, individual progress in learning this task. What pro correlates is the, the participation and the discussion and the trying to work things together. So it's very much, again, a way of saying that these sensory motor coordinations are being constructed together with others. And if you go to sociology, you will find that this is not a new idea. So the idea of techniques of the body, of mouth to mouth, uh, and the sociology of the habitus, you know, table manners, things like that, institutional influences on how we construct our bodies. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't think I will have time for, for going on, on the Simon Long stuff, but I will. Uh, <laughs> that's the really new stuff. Uh, <laughs> but I, I will. All the linguistic body stuff, which is another new stuff. But um, I think, I, in any case, maybe. Uh, okay, wait, I, I, finish, I finish now. Uh, let me, let me just, just jump, jump to the conclusion slide, just simply to. <laughs> Wait, uh, it wasn't so bad. Well, I want to, just one, one thing I want to say is that there is a, a new book coming out on how these ideas apply to, to language. We're pushing this forward, and it's called, coming out by MIT Press in October. And, and there's a model that explains it. You know. <laughs> but, but I'm not, I was not going to be able to describe it anyway. Uh, but, but this is for, for the future. Um, just to then put the, the conclusions there, so the active perspective, I mentioned that mind continuity, something I didn't say, but it's, it was obvious, it's this idea of the world involvement. All explanations are not in the organism, but it's all in, the world is more involved than uh, as sources, sources of information, sources of input. The conceptual engineering that we made, these dynamic systems, we create this concept because something's going to need it. The dialectical uh, method that's trying to make things more concrete. The individualism, I didn't say it, unfortunately, but there is something to do with, maybe we can come to this discussion, how the, uh, the philosophy of Chibasti Monton helps us understand the process of individuation. There is a multiplicity of bodies. In my body, there's a multiplicity of bodies already, because I said there's organic, sensory motor, what well, I didn't say how, but there's also a linguistic body uh, involved here. But also multiplicity is, if you like, how are we going to make science of bodies if there's so much diversity? Well, I don't know, I don't think it's impossible, but I think that the key datum of that science is the diversity of bodies. That's all we need to explain. Uh, so there are billions of path dependent, achieve, and act so the human bodies. And there was something about the idea. I'm going to stop there. Thank you. Thanks for this wonderful talk, Rebecca. Can you elaborate on the role of uh, uh, metastability in your account? Yes. Okay, so metastability, I didn't say that. Okay, but um, it's a very useful concept from fundamental systems where we are looking at conditions that are not, you know, we mentioned attractors, and the attractors seem that this would be stable attractors, and then the sense that, well, once you fall into the attractor, you're there, until something else changes. Idea, metastability is, is, is when, when you're con con contrasting it with this condition, it's not the attractor, but something that is durable, but eventually close, close to some critical boundary and able to change eventually. So it's sensitive. It's a condition that is sensitive to meaningful interactions. Or but when you contrast it to just transient and change and so on, it's stable. So, so is that, you know, just, just to put it in, in very, very simple terms, it's that middle ground between the, 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 the fixed stationary stable, no, fixed stable situation and the transient situation. There are situations that are durable, that were, and that's sometimes all you need. So you don't need the, the system to be in a full fixed point attractor in order to consider it uh, already as, as part of a you know, stable organization and so on. You must, that durability uh, could be from, you know, in the, um, 
the critical condition of the ultrafast combination example is the moment that you put yourself there, the moment that you can respond to the go-no-go -no -go, uh, situation very, very rapidly, that's a metastable situation. There are technical issues, but I'm not going to go into that. Yeah. Unless that answers. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, for great. talk really it ordered a lot of things and um, I'm really interested in, in the notion of time scales and uh, I'm wondering how come with all those time scales around we really always have something like pet time scales like micro I think said so that uh, some of the time scales are our favorite that we like to do research on uh, or uh, consider par particularly important and I wanted to ask you if you think that, if this is true, if we can avoid it or should avoid it, and also if this mm, choice of PET scales, PET time scales come from praxis maybe, scientific praxis, or they come from the real, some real organizational of processes that make some time scales more <laughs> constitutional. Sure, sure, well, it's a great question. It does come from practice, practice Definitely, but that doesn't mean that that practice is totally disconnected with some, on, on, if you like, differences in the quality and mode of existence of different processes on different timescales. So it doesn't, it's not one or the other. It, but sometimes what we need to be careful about is whether we're not refining something into a timescale simply because we have the word for it. Uh, as I said, as I said very briefly, it, it, in other, in other areas of study, this is a very, like in physics, it's a very, a very well, in some aspects of physics, it's a very simple situation. Uh, the difference between, um, I, I owe this example to Mary, the difference between classical and relativistic um, dynamics and, and is, uh, well, if you're very close to, the, to the, uh, the speed of light, you have to use relativistic dynamics. If you're uh, everyday, you know, dynamics and Newtonian dynamics are just fine. Um, and that difference comes from the theory that tells us you're okay here if you do this, but if you don't go over there, you're not okay here. First of all, we don't have that theory that tells us when we are okay or not okay. And that's the problem. So we need to rely on, on let's say, the, pra the practice that tells us, well, so far this is okay. To, to treat this as one time scale and that as a different time scale. Uh, or, to put it more precise, as a time scale that I can cut off from my study, that I can say, well, this will not have an influence. Um, but if there is, a th and this is maybe the goal of, of, of an active theory, is to, to try to, to see whether we can discover how we can make sense in which of this relation between time scales such that we will say, look, no, we can't do that particular approximation. So when you see these are all behavioral time scales, but when you see all, all the connections between time scales and, and the, and the dual brain scanning case or the power law one over F analysis case, you see that it's very clear there that the, the, the empirical data is telling you that you can't separate this time scale. So there's, there's a very long uh, term correlation between the fast and the slow and they're all part of, of, of one process, even though some part of the process is fast and some part of that process is slow. But it's, 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 it's not separable. So the question, and it's an open question, is can we have a theory that will tell us when we can separate the time scales productively? And, and that's, uh, because to say that they're never separable is like saying, well, okay, fine, everything's connected. This is a rubber ball problem again. No. Uh, that's not what we want. We want to be able to say, we have a theory that tells us we are on a firm ground by saying that I can ignore historical time scales in this particular problem. Thanks for the really rich talk. Um, I want to pick up on two things. So, first of all, how is the talk of constructing the world fitting together with the merleau pontian idea of the, the subject as a project of the world? So, you know, those two things don't look like they fit together very well, but I know that, that you think they do. So, just an invitation to say a little bit more about how, to, how those two ideas relate. 
And then secondly, the idea of the multiple bodies. So you said that there are billions of bodies or that you yourself have multiple bodies, yeah. uh, the organic body, the sensory motor body, the intersubjective body, so on. How do you think about the relation between those different bodies? Okay, I'm just going to have a point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, so uh, now, first of all, constructing the work, I would never really try to construct the bodies and construct them. In that sense, uh, I, I, as an ancient, come with a, an idea I would bring this into fruition by just building that world. Bringing forth is a little bit more, at least I understand it to be a little bit more, more like what you do eventually is, is contributing to, to the stability or to changes in the world that, you, that will feed back on you and, and your possibilities of action. So the primitive technology is building the whole world. Of course it's not doing it out of his own creativity. It comes from you know, a tradition, a, a, a culture that, that knows about all these things, but he's building everything from stuff that he finds around. So he's constructing, in this case, constructing my words, as a metaphor, but he's bringing this into creation. And what Merleau-Ponty emphasizes is the other side, the same story, but, it, but it may be that it's that side that is the, the other determination, which is you never separate from the world. You're of the world. You're, you're, you're a process of the world, too. And, and and like the question of the time scales, it may be that there are conditions in which one thing is highlighted more than the other, and you, you're safe to say, treat this as an agent, more or less self-sufficient, that is doing things in the environment, or no, maybe at, at other, if there are other problems, you have to see how, how it is connected with the others and, and so on, like in the case of the uh, interactive with the subjective construction of the sensory motor networks. So that, that, that is not, so is that, Developing bodies is not uh, separate from the world, it's off the world. So again, we have to, to, to be able to look at things from different perspectives. And then the, the, the sense of the different bodies, we discussed that in the new book in the linguistic body. And so uh, they're not the same, they're not separate either. Uh, we come with a, the metaphor that we come with is the, the, the metaphor of anchoring, like an anchor, that, that your, your experience and your form of life uh, like is. is differently anchored to different parts, different bodies of your own in different situations. So if you're hungry, you know, this, this, this organic aspect of your